Now I'm going to go over some of the camera's basic functions and show you how easy it is to use. So let me just put some of these things away. First things first, let's turn it on. The power switch is here on the mode dial. To turn it on, you just put this lever into that position there, and that's for still photography. And then if you want to record video, you switch it up to the next one, this small little camera icon here. You can take photos in video mode, but they'll have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio like your video footage, rather than the 3 by 2 ratio that's most typical when you're using a camera like this. Aspect ratio refers to the shape of your photo. 16 by 9 is a wider rectangle than the 3 by 2. As we're going to talk about taking photos first, let's leave the power switch in the on position. The mode dial next to the power switch allows you to select what kind of help you're going to get from the camera, whether you're taking photographs or shooting video. You twist it around like this, lining up the mode that you want with this white line here. For now, let's leave it in auto, so if I dial it around to A, this green A stands for auto, or as Canon calls it, scene intelligent auto. I'll talk more about these different modes later on in this video. Once you've selected auto mode, go down to the lens here and make sure that you've got autofocus selected. AF stands for autofocus and MF stands for manual focus. By doing this, you're setting the camera into full auto mode, which means that you can just point and shoot the camera and it will do its best to focus and expose your image correctly. Once you've turned the camera on and selected your mode, you'll want to open up the LCD monitor, which is at the back here. Before I do that, I'll just take the lens cap off. So the LCD monitor at the back is for viewing information about your images as well as the images themselves. It's also a touch screen and you can use it to control quite a lot of the functions on the camera such as the exposure settings and the focus. It pulls open like this and once it's open you can rotate it all the way around. It doesn't go 360 degrees but it does go 180 degrees and then once you're all the way around you can push it back into this recess here. How you position the monitor depends on your personal preference, but when you're taking photos, it's usually easier to have it tucked away neatly in the back in this recess here, so that when you hold the camera body firmly with both hands, it's easy to look through the viewfinder and take your shot. In photo mode, what you'll normally see on the monitor is information like this here. You won't see the view through your lens unless you press this button here, which is the live view button, but I'll talk more about this later on. The monitor is also used to view your images so that when you take a photograph it will appear on the screen for a few seconds for you to view. To look at them properly you need to press this blue button down here with the blue arrow on it and then that will take you into playback mode. The reason you don't see the view through the lens on your monitor is because of the design of DSLRs which is based on traditional film cameras which obviously didn't have LCD monitors. Traditionally photographers would use a viewfinder here on the back to compose their shots. The camera is designed to be held up to the eye like this, with one hand gripping the body of the camera, and that gives you easy access to the shutter button, which is here, and then the other hand is underneath the lens, supporting the camera. Using the viewfinder isn't just an old habit that photographers have failed to shed. There are some really important benefits to holding the camera up to your eye. Firstly, it's a third point of contact with your body, making the camera more steady. If you were to just hold the camera out with two hands like this, then you'd find it much harder to avoid camera shake, which can result in blurry photos. Secondly, with your eye up against the viewfinder, you instinctively close the other eye so that you can't see anything apart from the image through the lens, which allows you to really focus on taking the photo. When you put your eye up to the viewfinder, the LCD monitor will turn off like this. And that's because of this small little sensor here, so when that's covered up, the monitor will go off. This is helpful because it helps you focus, as there's no light coming from the monitor to distract you. It also saves on battery life. You can use a viewfinder with or without glasses on, although it's usually easier to shoot without glasses. And you can adjust the clarity of the viewfinder to suit your eyesight by using this small diopter adjustment dial, which is here next to the viewfinder. Just make sure that the camera is focused correctly on the subject when you make any adjustments. With the lens set to auto, getting the shot in focus is really easy. All you need to do is press down gently on the shutter button, which is here. This is called a half press, and it can take a while to get the knack of. If you press too hard, the camera will just take a shot and you'll more than likely end up with a blurry photo. But if you press the shutter button halfway until you feel some resistance, the camera will immediately focus on your subject and it'll beep to tell you that the focus has been locked, like this. If it doesn't beep, it means that it hasn't been able to focus, which will either be because it's too dark for the camera to pick up anything to focus on, or because you've got the lens set to manual focus. 
When you're looking through the viewfinder, you'll also notice there are nine little dots. These are focus points and they flash red to tell you exactly where the lens has focused. If you're finding that the camera isn't focusing on the point that you want, try adjusting the shot slightly and focusing again with a half press. So if I demonstrate that now, if I adjust the shot, focus and then shift back. Once you've got the point that you want locked in focus, keep your finger pressed halfway down on the shutter button and by doing that the camera won't refocus. The other thing that the camera does when you're in auto and you press the shutter button halfway down is it sets your exposure. Exposure refers to the amount of light that you're exposing the camera's sensor to, which is how you create a photograph. Getting your exposure right is vitally important and a basic skill of both photography and video. To illustrate, let's look at this overexposed photograph here. You can see it looks too bright and there are areas that are completely blown out, which means that you can't see any detail. It is possible to overexpose an image to such a degree that all you get is white. In contrast, this is an underexposed photograph here. You can see it looks dull and you can't see anything in the dark areas. And this is the same scene correctly exposed. In auto, the camera makes sure that you're getting the correct exposure by metering the light across the entire scene within the frame, placing particular emphasis on areas locked in focus. You'll notice some numbers appearing below the image, and these are telling you the exposure settings that the camera has decided upon. In auto mode, if there isn't enough light, the camera's inbuilt flash will automatically open, like this. This will add light to your scene when you're taking a photograph, but you may not like the results. I'll talk a bit about how to use the flash and how to turn it off later on in this video. So, once you've got your focus and your exposure, you're all ready to take a photo. As I've already mentioned, to do that, you simply press the shutter button down all the way. You'll hear that mechanical click-click sound that cameras always make when they take a photo, and that's the sound of the mirror moving out the way and the shutter opening and closing, which allows light to enter into the body of the camera and onto the sensor. Let's just go through all of those things again and take a photograph. Before I do that, I just want to turn the camera off and change the settings slightly. Put this back. Okay, so what we need to do is turn the camera onto the on position switch the mode dial to auto here. On the lens, we need to make sure that it's set to autofocus there. And let's open up the viewfinder. I always do it the wrong way. Okay, next we need to compose our shot. Half press, let's put the flash down. Half press to get your focus and full press to take the shot. And then if I show you that, that's gonna preview for a few seconds. Now, before I start talking about the more in-depth features of the camera, um, I just want to mention a few things about using a tripod. So, let me just get a tripod here. The screw attachment on a tripod is a standard size, and pretty much every camera that you can buy has some way of attaching to a tripod, usually by uh, fitting it on the base of the camera. On the 700D, the screw attachment fits in here, right on the bottom. So what you do, first off, you need to get the tripod plate off the tripod by opening this lever at the back. That lifts it up and that just pops off like that. And then, so if I line up the screw with the hole in the bottom of the camera, at first it might be a bit difficult to get that to grip, but once the thread is caught, it will tighten up quite nicely. Make sure that's level. And there it is, nice and tight. Okay, so now once you've got that fitted, slip the tripod plate into the tripod by just positioning it and pressing down at the back and then that should lock into place. There you go, the camera's now attached and nice and solid on the tripod. One little tip, it's really easy to lose track of tripod camera plates. The plate should live on the tripod so make a habit of always removing it from the camera and putting it back on the tripod when you finish using it. Using a tripod is a good way to improve the quality of both your photos and your video footage. Firstly, it helps keep the camera steady and avoid what's called camera shake. Camera shake is any unwanted movements picked up by the camera while shooting handheld. And when you're taking a photo, it can lead to blurry photos like this one. This problem is especially obvious when you're shooting in low light conditions or when you're zoomed in. When you're shooting video, camera shake results in constantly moving footage which can be unpleasant and distracting for the viewer. The other reason a tripod helps improve the quality of what you're shooting is because it slows you down. Being slow might not suit all situations, but in general, you're going to get better images because it makes you concentrate more as you set up each shot. So let's put the tripod away. First off, let's take the plate off the camera, just by undoing it like that. Put the camera down, slot that back on, and I'll just put that over to one side. 
because what we're going to do now is take a more in-depth look at the camera, starting with the lens.